This is a bottle of ammonia solution, as known as ammonia hydroxide. It is a solution of a toxic gas that is corrosive and dangerous for our environment. However, due to its many uses, it is considered a must-have in any laboratory of sorts. As a base, ammonia can participate in a plethora of reactions, one of the most well-known being the neutralization of hydrochloric acid, which will eventually result in the product of ammonium chloride. However, I intend to explore another property of ammonia, which is its incredible solubility in water. There are plenty of methods to prove ammonia is soluble in water, but none are more eye-appealing than the ammonia fountain. Whilst researching on how to properly conduct this experiment, I have found an array of resources containing different and unique methods. Some use a syringe or a balloon. However, the most common and what it seems to be the most reliable uses two glass containers, which are usually a sort of flask and a beaker. They are connected using a glass pipe. Here is a short list of the materials I'm going to use in this experiment. I decided to use a 500 milliliter glass beaker as the bottom container and proceeded to add distilled water into it although water from the top should work as fine. There are many indicators commonly used for this experiment. However, the most commonly used is undoubtedly phenolphthalein due to its powerful pink color in the presence of bases, such as ammonia. Adding ammonia is a challenging endeavor that requires taking necessary precautions. To ensure my safety, I equip myself with safety goggles and a respirator to safeguard against inhaling ammonia gas. After performing stoichiometric calculations, I determined that 6 milliliters of ammonia should be introduced into the spherical boiling flask. It is vital to avoid adding an excessive amount as this would result in excessive pressure accumulation within the flask potentially leading to the explosion of the bomb. An Erlenmeyer flask is attached above the round bottom. This is where the fountain will take place. I also added an indicator paper inside the flask to indicate the presence of ammonia gas. Then carefully lighting the kerosene-filled lamp underneath the round bottom to start the production of ammonia gas. It should be noted that ammonium hydroxide boils at roughly 38 Celsius. Therefore, heating it for a short time should suffice. However, after adding a bit of distilled water into the flask to kickstart the experiment, nothing happened. I suspect this could be the result of three things which were either that there was not enough ammonia hydroxide for the reaction to be feasible, or the ammonia had not made it into the upper Erlenmeyer flask, or even I'm just bad at chemistry. But it's entirely possible all these things mean one thing, that is, I'm just bad at basic chemistry. I then decided to give the day a rest and replan the experiment. After doing a bit more research, I decided to add a trying tube into the setup. I concluded another reason why the fountain was unable to flourish was due to the presence of water moisture in the Erlenmeyer flask, which reacted the ammonia present to revert back to ammonium hydroxide, therefore resulting in too little ammonia to make a reaction feasible. As a drying agent, I chose calcium oxide due to its property of not reacting with ammonia. This time, we are going to swap the places of the flasks. The Erlenmeyer will now be where ammonia gas is produced. However, whilst researching this experiment, I came across a research paper 
stating that the use of Erlenmeyer's could be dangerous and instead advised to use a boiling flask as an ammonia preparation chamber. But I will still be using the Erlenmeyer since the amount of ammonia gas produced should not be a problem. The formula for the decomposition of ammonia hydroxide is as follows. A tube with two rubber stoppers is attached above the Erlenmeyer. This introduces a new piece of equipment into our experiment, the drying tube. Before we could attach any more glassware to our preparation chamber, we would first have to attach it to a retort stand to ensure the safety and stability of our glassware. With the drying tube now attached, I slid a piece of cotton into it to act as a base for our drying agent, calcium oxide. Before adding calcium oxide, we will have to understand that calcium oxide reacts in the following ways. We then could add roughly 4 grams of calcium oxide into the tube. And finally, placing the boiling flask right above the drying tube, where the fountain will take place. I also added two pieces of indicator paper inside the drying tube and boiling flask respectively. I, as seen previously in this video, am using an oil lamp filled with kerosene. However, it will be beneficial to instead use a Bunsen burner or replace the kerosene with either methanol or ethanol as the flames produced by these substances have less soot and odor. After waiting roughly 2 minutes for all the ammonium hydroxide to boil, I separated the boiling flask, now in theory containing ammonia gas, from the preparation chamber. Initially, the reaction was nowhere in sight. However, after squirting a tad bit of distilled water into the flask, we can observe that the beautiful demonstration of ammonia solubility in water has begun. Now, Simply looking at the demonstration itself will give us an insight of ammonia solubility, but it does not give the full picture. That is why we have to understand how and why this experiment works. Firstly, we will have to understand the pink color produced by the fountain. This is due to the presence of phenolphthalein, which turns pink in the presence of weak bases. However, the fountain effect we observed previously is a bit trickier to wrap your head around. However, to put it in simple terms, when water enters the flask on top, it reacts with the ammonia to produce a solution of ammonia hydroxide. This solution is denser than the surrounding water. This also reduces pressure inside the flask since less ammonia gas is present. Both factors result in an upward flow of the solution. The ammonia fountain experiment serves as a fascinating scientific demonstration, showcasing the principles of ammonia solubility in water and its interaction with basic gas laws, allowing us to witness firsthand the dissolution of ammonia gas into water and the subsequent equilibrium between dissolved and gaseous forms, providing valuable insights into the concepts of gas-liquid interactions, solubility, chemical equilibrium, and the fundamental laws that govern these phenomena.